Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to Be Still Voice Works. Today I'm going to be telling a story, an ancient Native American tale, about how the first flute was made. It's called Grizzle Voice. This story was passed on down to me by my grandfather, who will be on tomorrow night. So please check it out. It may be late since he's in a different time zone, but I will post it probably around 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please enjoy this tale, entitled Grizzle Voice. A long time ago in the Native American tribe, especially in this one particular tribe, when a young man wanted to find a suitor or to find a wife, he would have to learn a beautiful song. And he would sing the song, hiding behind a bush, waiting for the female or the male, I guess. I don't know that particular society's rules, and this is a divulgence from the original story. However, whenever they wanted to choose a partner, they would hide behind a bush and they would sing a song, a beautiful song. Say you, say me, Safer always, that's the way it should be. And if she liked the song, she would come over and she would join in the song with him, and then they would go to the chief and be married. It was such a beautiful tradition. After the boy got to his first hunt, he was able to choose a bride. Well, I guess try out for a bride. Well, the boy turned 15 years old, and the chief came to him and said, Son, it's time for you to go on your first hunt. You are ready to become a man. Oh my God, he was excited. I can't believe it. It's finally here all my years waiting and I get to go be a man on the hunt with the men. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. He starts practicing the song. He's like, I want to go with one that's really beautiful that other people, maybe they aren't singing. I can get a girl this way. So he sang. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> so he was preparing his song to sing. The day of the hunt comes and he's sharpened his spear. He's flexed his muscles. He's ready to go. So the men all leave on the hunt. They're gone for about a week when all of a sudden they hear something in the forest. Something walking towards them. It was a bear. This is it. It's time. Get ready. Get ready, young man. It's time to kill your bear. So they start throwing spears at the bear, and the bear gets really upset and starts running at them. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to attack. Oh, no. It's going to attack them. And then it, whoo, the boy puts his spear right into the chest of the bear, and the bear slides down the spear, and in its dying breath, the bear grabs the boy by the throat and crushes his windpipe. Oh no, oh no, I can't sing. How am I ever gonna find a wife, he thought, or a husband. How on earth am I going to make it in this tribe? So he goes back to the healer. They put some salve on it. They lay him down. They tell him what to do, try to get him to drink some honey. But when he recovers, unfortunately, his voice sounds like like this. Oh no. Oh man, he can't sing. He tried, but it just sounded like the blues. I tried to buy you a ten dollar dinner. But you said you wanted a fifteen one. Something like that. B.B. King, sorry. <laughs> um, so he can't sing. So he decides, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going off into the forest. I'm going to go start over. You know, maybe find me a nice tree that might like the sound of my voice and we'll get married. So he leaves. He's gone for about three or four months. And it's starting to come winter. It's starting to be cold outside. So he's walking along on top of this mountain. It's really cold. It's getting dark. He decides to make camp. So he sits down and he lights himself a fire. All of a sudden he looks up and he sees a woodpecker. And the woodpecker is frozen. There's snow all over it because the snows had come in that night. And he said, oh, no, I'm going to help you. I'm going to show mercy to that thing. I love animals. I'm going to take care of you. So he gets it and he puts it inside of his coat, his deerskin jacket. 
cozies up next to the fire, and it starts to thaw. The next morning, after he wakes up, he checks his pocket. Oh no, the bird's gone. It must have flown off, at least I saved it. When all of a sudden he heard a voice. What you did for me was amazing. You saved my life when you had no need to. And for that, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a powerful spirit of the forest, and I'm going to grant you something that will make your life amazing. Go up into that tree and pull me down that hollow branch. So he does, he climbs up there, pulls the branch down, then the woodpecker flies over to it, starts poking little holes. About every inch or so. Then he says, all right, now, <clears throat> rub this end on the rock like this, make it smooth, do the other end, tie this thing on there, he tells him what to do. All of a sudden he says, now blow through that one end. So he does. It's the flute. So he goes back to his village so excited. He gets behind a bush. He sees the girl he's been waiting for, so happy that she didn't get married while he was gone in the forest for three months. And he gets his flute out. Oh my God, she said, what is that beautiful sound? What is that? I have to find it. So she goes back there and she sees him and she says, Crystal voice? Crystal voice? Is that you? That was bad. It's one of my voices I do in my Harry Potter narrations. <laughs> and so Grizzle voice got the girl. And it's just amazing that these stories pass on like this. You know, I would love to know how the first person really made the first flute. If anybody knows that information, I'm not going to Google it. I'm too lazy. It's 2020 after all. Then put it in the comments for others to see. But uh, this story just explains how even when something bad happens to you, if you show kindness and love to this earth, to this universe, that it will show it back to you. And maybe not in the way that you expected. As always, everyone, I love you and be still. Thank <laughs> you.